A Pratin co attempts to lure a predator away from its eggs by crouching on the ground with wings outstretched as though unable to fly. These sockeye salmon are nearing the end of their long journey upstream to reach the spawning grounds where they will lay their eggs, perhaps on the very stretch of river where they themselves grew up. How do these animals know how to behave? Do they have to learn these skills or is their behavior shaped by heredity, in other words, innate? The part these two influences, nature and nurture, play in behavior has fascinated man for centuries. Perhaps by looking at the behavior of other animals, we may learn more about ourselves. During the earliest stages of an animal's life, it's often the simplest behavior which is the most important for survival. A kangaroo leaves the womb while still an embryo and makes a remarkable journey up to its mother's pouch. Still blind and deaf, its bud-like front legs are strong enough to pull it upwards through the fur, guided by smell. There's no time for mistakes on this three-minute journey. Once it reaches the pouch, it'll clamp onto a teat and remain suckling for the next seven months. When an animal has to get it right first time, the behavior is usually innate. It works well provided circumstances do not change suddenly. Birth is a time when mistakes could be fatal. A newly born wildebeest calf tries to struggle to its feet to suckle immediately after birth. If it fails to do so, it'll probably fall victim to predators. Wildebeest live in large herds, and it is obviously important that the mother learns to recognize her offspring after birth. She licks her calf and learns to recognize its smell and the sound of its cries. But this learning ability is only restricted to the first five minutes after birth. If she's separated from her calf during these vital minutes, she will always reject her offspring in the future and refuse to suckle it. The young calf learns to recognize its mother in the same way and always tries to keep up with her. This limited type of learning is often called imprinting. These goosander chicks are imprinted on the first moving thing they see, normally their mother. They learn to recognize her within the first day of hatching and subsequently they will follow her wherever she goes. They'll even hurl themselves over a 60 foot drop to reach her. Luckily, they are well padded for a soft landing. Immediately, they make their way towards the river where their mother is calling them to join her. They are already able to feed themselves, but they will stay with her for another month to learn the finer points of feeding. Birds which nest well away from predators produce young which are almost helpless, but the chicks have one innate response. They beg with a wide open gape when the parent approaches the nest with food. As long as the gape is there, the parent will ignore all other clues and simply stuff the chick with food. This innate response to a begging gape is used by nest parasites to their own advantage. After heaving the dunnock's eggs out of the nest, a cuckoo chick presents a super gape 
which the poor foster parent finds irresistible. She slaves tirelessly to feed the usurper. Perhaps if the Dunnock had been able to include size as an additional clue to the identity of her own offspring, cuckoos wouldn't be around now. We all take it for granted that animals know what to eat. The hummingbird's choice of food is innate because it's specially adapted to probe for nectar while hovering on the wing. It would only be worse off if it tried to feed on anything else. But for omnivores, such as baboons, there's a great deal to be gained from curiosity and trying out new foods. Young baboons learn how to manipulate food and what is edible by imitating their elders. As with humans, the older members of the troop tend to be more conservative, while young baboons are constantly trying out new objects for edibility. Perhaps that is how meat entered the diet of the whole troop. Learning gives baboons the flexibility to cope with sudden changes in the environment, such as drought. They can always switch over to another food. The baboons in this troop have learnt to turn over stones to search for termites. It isn't long before the observant youngster follows its mother's example. Many predators learn to pick out clues such as movement and color contrasts when searching for their prey. As a result, many prey insects remain motionless, breaking up their outline and blending in with the background. So this blue tit has to learn to look for new clues. It takes a long time to find the first camouflaged caterpillar, but once it's found one, it is able to spot others with increasing ease. The bird has got its eye in and learnt what to look for. But some insects have turned the bird's ability to learn simple visual patterns to their own advantage. These cinnabar moth caterpillars have acquired an unpleasant taste as a result of feeding on ragwort. Once a bird has sampled a cinnabar and rejected it, it'll always associate the colour pattern with an unpleasant experience. The same principle of warning coloration is used by many other poisonous insects, such as the caterpillar of the monarch butterfly, which feeds on toxic milkweed. But warning coloration will only work as long as the predator can learn and remember a warning pattern. Many animals have to learn a new skill before they can feed successfully. Squirrels have to practice cracking open hazelnuts. But surprisingly, the squirrel's hoarding of nuts beneath leaves is under innate control. If a squirrel is given nuts away from its native woodland, it'll still go through the motions of burying them, carefully covering them with leaves and patting them down. The result is far from desired, but the squirrel is unable to alter its behavior to cope with the new surroundings. The Pacific sea otter collects abalones and sea urchins from the seabed. At the same time, it selects a small stone and carries it up to the surface. uses the stone to smash open sea urchin shells laid across its chest. Now this learned behavior has become almost universal among Pacific sea otters.
These cheetah cubs may look as though they're just romping about aimlessly, but these chases actually involve many of the elements adults use when hunting. Play is rather like practicing for adulthood through fun and games, and most young mammals do it. By the time the cubs are nearly a year old, their mother may bring them a gazelle fawn to play with. The ability to chase and knock the fawn down is already there, but the cubs still haven't learned what to do with the fawn once they've brought it to the ground. With more practice and experience, they will soon be able to make a kill of their own. In Britain, blue tits accidentally discovered the cream in milk bottles when frost forced off the tops. A few birds learned that they could peck through the foil to reach the cream by peeling it back as though it was bark. The habit spread across the country as other birds imitated the pioneers until it became commonplace. Many birds are able to learn entirely new patterns of behavior. Marabou storks are normally only scavengers, feeding alongside vultures on a carcass. But during the dry season, such dense clouds of quelia and doves come to drink at the waterhole that the marabou only has to open its beak and charge, and some unfortunate bird will be bound to end up inside. It has learned the skills of a hunter. Japanese macaques have had to retreat to the harsh mountain regions of Japan to escape man. They've not only learned to forage for roots and berries beneath the snow, they've also learned to take advantage of the hot springs of the region. Japanese macaques are probably one of the few animals to take a hot bath apart from man. It's now part of their daily ritual to groom and bathe together in the steamy water. In other words, it has become part of their learned culture. Learning can also involve the suppression of innate behavior. Like most wild animals, these great white pelicans once feared man and avoided him. But continual exposure to the fishermen has taught them that they can come to no harm. In fact, there are distinct advantages in keeping as close to the boats as possible. This eider duck is trying to draw the intruders away from its nest by pretending to have a broken wing. But the people aren't interested in the birds or their eggs. All they want is the warm darn that the eiders use to insulate their eggs. But the eider still persists in its wing display. This actually makes it easier for the down collectors. Most defensive behavior, such as the eider's wing display, is innate because flight is only effective if it is fast. An innate response is far more likely to guarantee a quick reaction than a learned one. Astonishing migrations are found throughout the animal kingdom. Every two years, these green turtles migrate several thousand miles from their feeding grounds off the Brazilian coast to lay their eggs on Ascension Island. Ascension is a mere dot in the ocean. Yet they not only manage to locate it, they also succeed in finding the very beach where they themselves hatched out 20 years before. It's believed that they find their way by being imprinted on the taste of the water around Ascension. Once the female has laid her final batch of eggs, she returns to the sea. 
the young turtles hatch out almost two months later. It's vital that they emerge at night. Daytime temperatures would kill them. This is ensured by very simple innate behavior. If the turtle encounters sand above 86 degrees Fahrenheit, it stops moving. This will only happen during the day. At night, the temperature of the sand falls and the turtle is stimulated to crawl upwards until it breaks through the surface. The next problem for the hatchlings is to find their way down to the sea in the dark. It's believed that they are able to distinguish a paler band of sky above the sea because it acts like a huge mirror reflecting any light. It is an innate response which causes the turtles to head towards the light and the sea. Equivalent navigation skills are also found among many insects. This Bembex wasp has the non-stop task of feeding her grubs within their tunnel nests. Each time she leaves a nest, she carefully closes it up again so that it becomes invisible. Then she hovers and circles over the nest for a few seconds, memorizing all the landmarks, such as blades of grass or stones. When she returns with a paralyzed fly, she finds the burrow by recognizing the same landmarks. Bembex's tunnel seems relatively simple when we start to compare it with architecture as complex as a spider's web. When a spiderling builds its first web, it is perfect. The spider has nothing to learn, for the entire process is under innate control. The precise building behavior of bees is also mainly innate. The bees are so accurate that different individuals can work on separate parts of the comb and when all the sections finally meet up, they will match perfectly. Each bee carefully checks every angle so that it measures exactly 120 degrees and tests the thickness of the walls to within a hundredth of a millimeter. This is another digger wasp called Sphex. Like Bembex, it lays its eggs in tunnels in the sand. But instead of continually refilling the nest, Sphex stocks it with paralyzed prey only once, and then she closes the tunnel for good. After filling it with sand, she tries to block the tunnel with stones. She's very critical of her work the stones must fit exactly. Her choice of stones is based on learning by trial and error. At last she's satisfied with her masonry and vibrates her body against the top stone to shake down the sand grains and fill in the cracks. This part of her behavior is believed to be innate. When a young masked weaver builds its first nest, it certainly isn't perfect. The bird has correctly chosen green flexible grasses and split them, but it still has a lot to learn about weaving It's as though the bird has a blueprint of what the final nest should look like, but lacks the practical experience to achieve it. The weaver bird doesn't require a teacher, it just needs practice.
Each stage of nest building automatically stimulates the weaver to move on to the next stage. The final result is recognizable as a masked weaver nest. It's just a bit more untidy than most. These more experienced birds are making a much neater job. It's important that the young weaver should learn quickly for the male's success at finding a mate depends on his skills as a nest builder. But when man builds, his behavior is guided entirely by skills and knowledge that he has learned. Different cultures and even individual architects build in a variety of styles throughout the species. There is no blueprint. Probably one of the oldest questions concerning learning relates to bird song. Do songbirds have to learn what to sing, or do they know it from the moment they leave the egg? It seems that both learning and innate behavior are important. Many young songbirds must be exposed to the adult territorial song within the first 90 days of hatching, the so-called sensitive period. During this time, the bird will assimilate a crude outline of the song, but it will not sing at this stage. It's only during the following spring that the bird actually practices the song and develops the detailed trills and embellishments which sound so familiar to us. Every species learns a slightly different song, though some, such as jays and starlings, can learn and mimic the calls of another species. Apart from these exceptions, a bird's song is consistent enough to allow us to identify the species, such as this sedge warbler, by its song alone. But no animal behavior is as static as it seems. Even this potter wasp, building its mud nest, must be able to adapt to a constantly changing world.